Hi, I'm Fiona Graham. I'm Editorial Director at Light Reading, and I'm here with Dave Ward, CEO of Packet Fabric, a leading network as a service provider. Before joining Packet Fabric, Dave was um, engineering CTO at Cisco, so he's got a lot of thoughts. So just to start us off, Dave, Packet Fabric is a network as a service provider. What does that mean? So network as a service is the culmination of the glory and vision of software-defined networking. It is a real-time, on-demand, wide area network. And that's really what's key. And what's different about Packet Fabric, because a lot of people claim to be network as a service companies, is we own and run and operate an actual network. Spectrum, fiber, hardware, but our intellectual property is really the software layer on top. We're not one of these fly-by-night overlay companies that claims to be network as a service and can't guarantee any SLA or quality of service or do any latency engineering. No, we run the network. And so that's really what I consider network as a service to be. And, you know, you're saying that you run the network. What exactly does that entail? So uh, we lease or own dark fiber or lease spectrum. We've got redundant hardware. Uh, stacks in each point of presence. Uh, we actually have off-the-shelf uh, routing and optical devices uh, from common vendors out there. But uh, we actually automate and orchestrate a real-time on-demand network, which is also fundamentally different than what a telco does. Uh, we're trying to beat and break that, that legacy telecom model of order a circuit, get it delivered in, at best case, six weeks. Uh, these 365-day or really long-term contracts that are necessary. In our model, we want a technology disruption of real-time on-demand networking that's programmatic and API-driven, but we also want to disrupt the business model and have it be just like you're used to in the cloud where you only pay for what you use. And why do you think that you, you're more successful at this than, than telcos are at the moment? I mean, obviously, you're doing things in a radically different way, but what do you think is, is, is the key to your approach? Uh, because we're radical. Um, actually, the radical part of it is we are not tied to a multi-decade old IT stack or OSS, BSS system that is the anchor around the industry slowing us all down. We did a ground up cloud native scale out approach uh, that's also fundamentally different than what the notion of SDN was when it was described in data centers. So we threw away the architecture of the legacy telcos. We threw away the architecture of these logically centralized controllers and patchwork quilt of tools that were necessary for data center and other parts of the network. What's different about what we did was build it ground up and build and take design patterns that uh, really allow for not only scale out being cloud native, but also allow for full upgrade, downgrade, reliability, availability, if something was to go wrong in that software, we are true CICD for networking and try and really working towards the network is code and creating an API layer on top. And what do the telcos think about this? So I was worried about that, Fiona. I was worried that, um, one, that when the entire movement of network as a service became real, that the telcos would come in as the 800-pound gorillas and say, oh, no, you don't. But instead, what's really kind of interesting is that telcos are partnering with Packet Fabric because of two real reasons, maybe more. But, and, I'll, and so I'll go through a few. One is that we all, we all know if you follow the industry that enterprise IT architectures are changing. Everything is driven out of the cloud from applications to storage to security. The discussions of hybrid cloud architectures and cloud architectures, those are discussions of many years ago. Right now, it's about how can I orchestrate multi-cloud workflows? And so therefore, let's take a look what the telcos have done over the last 10 years. They've spent billions on spectrum, they've spent billions on radio, and they have not spent anything to connect to these clouds and to build an enterprise business service. Um, I'm going to go as far as basically saying MP MPLS is dead. Long live MPLS. Um, I've also claimed that ATM is dead many, many years ago, and ATM hung on for a while. So joking aside, MPLS will be around for a while, but the fundamental problem is that an MPLS VPN is a legacy static architecture that doesn't allow you to easily dynamically attach to clouds, whether they're private data center operators, public cloud, SaaS software, security, storage, unified communications, the whole lot. 
And so the response of telcos to partner with Packet Fabric to have our real-time on-demand agile cloud core attached into their MPLS VPN customers, one, reduces their cost of how to be able to build this out because we've already built it. And two, is an immediate revenue gain for them. And so they have turned to partner with Packet Fabric, which I'm very, very happy about. I mean, you're talking about Telco's failure to um, move into the cloud in, in a timely fashion. And I think, you know, for most commentators looking at the industry, the fact that big tech is moving into into you know, areas that are traditionally seen as telco areas and the cloud is very much part of the future for how telecommunications are going to work. I mean, why do you think that the telcos failed to do this and it, and it was left to companies like your, like Packet Fabric and, and others to, to, to fill that gap? A couple of, couple of main reasons. One, the rise of cellular communications without a doubt, extremely expensive mm-hmm. spectrum, exp- extremely expensive to deploy. And also really just the overall business model. The business model is not there yet for productivity as a service coming from a telco. And this note, because we're really looking at enterprise employee user experience or consumer user experience, that notion of how are my, how is my business is running based upon how my applications are running is not a part of the industry that the telcos have traditionally or now participated in. And so therefore they weren't, it appeared to me that they weren't even sure if that they, it was their role in the industry. Well, it is a network's role because you need the guaranteed bandwidth, you need the guaranteed connectivity, you need guaranteed latency um, for the proper application experience. But most importantly, we actually need to transform the internet architecture. And I say that because, look, there's a movement away from MPLS towards things like SD-WAN, which uh, I think anyone following the industry understands. But SDN gateways are in a centralized cloud. And then security services are in a different centralized cloud. And storage services are in a different centralized cloud. And then I want to go to another application, creating these crazy tromboning of traffic across the internet, of which any network that isn't a fabric with full connectivity into these clouds is really stuck with this tromboning. And the notion in traditional telco architectures of hybrid cloud place a gateway somewhere, which even pulls that traffic and makes it outrageously expensive. So one, the business model wasn't there to answer your question directly, Fiona. Two, the the architectures that they put in place and these notions of gateways and hybrid cloud architectures are just the wrong archi- wrong architecture for an agile cloud core. So it necessitated the need for packet fabric. And, you know, how do you see this iterating going forward? I mean, what's the, the next step in your relationship with telcos? Um, do you see this, this relationship expanding or do you see what you do having a sense of autonomy around it? Uh, I do see it expanding. As our, as our partnership uh, continues, we recently announced a partnership with Colt. You're going to see some other partnerships coming out shortly for us. And really, the taking Packet Fabric and not being direct to consumer, but instead uh, creating partners to be powered by Packet Fabric is really the direction of the company. And so where I see this going is using our points of presence to be able to take these large centralized service cores and begin to distribute them. Because an agile cloud core has a role in something like 5G as well, because I believe we're the only wide area network that at, because we're real time and on demand and programmatic can actually perform 5G slicing. Second, because we guarantee bandwidth and guarantee latency, uh, when SD-WAN gateways, storage, security, uh, et cetera, is moved into our POPs, the definition of 5G latency can truly be the time between the device and the cloud. Because that, as we, as we started in this conversation, that's the only latency that matters, and that's the only experience that matters for an employee or a consumer. So I also want to change the internet architecture from being static uh, requiring paper uh, and plugs to be able to be to be operated to one in which software can drive it, but two, one in which we can distribute out these services and have a direct shot of of all our traffic going to the to the cloud that's necessary and not having this crazy tromboning across the internet. 
I mean, you, you talked a little bit there about 5G and its connection to to network as a service and what you do. I mean, it'd be great if you could sort of expand on that a little bit and, and talk about, because I know that you recently wrote a blog post talking about this, about how network as a service fits with 5G. Um, and you talk about how network as a service plays a very critical role in delivering um, value for enterprise. So how do you see that sort of playing out? So... Uh, talking about the internet architecture for a second, we you know the the old architecture we used to get together in central a few centralized locations and have internet peering. Then it went regional peering, uh, as things like Akamai, Netflix, uh, Google Global Cash, etc., uh, went into telco networks. Then it went to metro networks. Well, now with five G, the architecture is going all the way to the tower, and it's how quickly can I get bandwidth to the cloud or clouds that I want to, you need an agile cloud core. That truly is the role of Packet Fabric. So one, I I mentioned just previously distributed edge services, but two, it's really that distributed edge architecture, peering architecture and cloud orchestration architecture that now is all the way out to the towers that is critical for 5G to meet any of the vision that it that it wants to, particularly for enterprises. How close do you think we are to actually seeing 5G's full potential? Because obviously at the moment, we're, we're not there yet. The, uh, so I do build, so I know that we are building out all the way to some towers. I know that we're partnering with telcos to be able to accomplish this. I think you're going to start to see these business products, these business bundles and plans kick up in the rest of 21 into 22. And as soon as uh, there's a full integration of our orchestration system and our billing system, you're going to see those enterprise 5G slicing services come out. Because again, I don't think the telcos with their wide area network are set up at all to deliver that within the next 10 years, but they can deliver that within the next 12 months with Packet Fabric. Wow. So you're very confident on on the ability of of your platform to scale with this? So I am. Uh, Again, we're we're still in a startup mode. We're only in, you know, greater than 200 points of presence and in our partner networks, you know, on, on the upwards of 350 to 400 points of presence. But because we went cloud native and don't have any logically centralized pieces, I know we can scale out to the tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of devices. The performance that we have by being cloud native and going scale out horizontally means that, uh, there is no state machine that gets that gets bogged down by any one device. We can get coherency and consistency across our network, monitor it, and guarantee it by simply doing this in parallel. And that those design patterns of cloud native and parallel processing are just so fundamentally different than anything that's been done in software defined networking or in legacy telco that I'm very confident. That's great. I mean, I know that um, I think I'm speaking for a lot of people when we say we're. we're very, very keen to see where 5G takes us in the future and to see it actually um, sort of fulfill its potential. So this, you know, looks very exciting and I'll, I'll definitely be watching um, with great interest. Um, David, well, thank you very much for, for joining us at Light Reading. Um, very interesting and um, hopefully speak to you again soon. Hey, thanks, Fiona. And I just want to part with the network is now code and it's been a long time coming. And so I'm, I'm really proud to be at Packet Fabric. Thanks a ton. Thank you.